Hey, how's it going, fan fans? Welcome to my for Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name's Rohan, and this is my platform where I do MMA and boxing related content. If you're new here, why don't you help me grow my platform? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video if you like it, maybe hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a video. With that said, it's a very, very interesting fight, and it's the correct fight to make in the flyweight division. It's the upcoming main event, and I am really looking forward to breaking this down. It's between um, Joseph Benavides, as he looks to finally claim his first ever world championship strap right towards the end of his career when he takes on the heavy hitting Davison Figueredo. Now, I'm sure I slaughtered his name, but we all know who we're talking about. It's a really great fight. Coming into this fight, there's a couple of things for us to think about. So, for Joseph Benavides, this is going to be, without a doubt, the last opportunity of his career to win a world title. Now, this comes on the back of Henry Cejudo vacating the £125 title because he wants to focus on his affairs at £135. Now, I don't think that was the right thing for, to do for Henry Cejudo. I think his frame is pretty good for £125. Also, there's an interesting backstory with um, Joseph Benavides where they coached the Ultimate Fighter together. They had that rivalry. Um, Joseph Benavides has the only other unrevenged loss over Henry Cejudo. I thought it would have been good for him to go for that. But I suppose maybe he wants to go another direction with his career. Maybe the weight cut ain't really too appealing for him anymore at, 100 and, um, 100, sorry, at 33 years old. What's interesting though for Joseph Benavides though is whilst he's been an elite high level competitor practically his whole career, he's never won that world title and now at 35 years old at 125 which is pretty much up there, he gets his final opportunity as he takes on a brutal knockout who after losing to Juicy Ava Omega has won two in a row and at 125 really carries that sort of gin, gin, John Lineker ability where he can just knock out people at 125 and you don't really see that too often. With that said, let's get through the tape and hopefully I don't start too much in this video because it seems like that's the way this one's going. Anyways, the first thing that jumps out at me is like I said, Joseph Benavides is 35 years old. At 35 years old, having been in the game for as long as he has and also fighting at 125 where his reflexes are definitely going to slow down a lot sooner than if he was a heavyweight and he would have a larger shelf life, you have to consider what Benavides has left in the tank. Now, what's interesting to me about this fight is that Benavides hasn't really shown no telltale signs of slowing down, and actually he's adapted his game along the line, so actually what he may lose out in physical attributes, he makes up for in technical differences. So he changes his game, and his game has adapted in a way over the last few years to adopt to the fact that he is slowing down in some ways, and that's very interesting to me. He fights Davidson Figueredo, who is only 32 years old. Now, I say only 32, as opposed to being 32, which is only three years younger than Joseph Benavides for a reason. That's because he's only had 18 professional fights, and in the UFC, he's, he's had about six or seven fights. So, considering he comes into this fight with nowhere near the level of mileage that Joseph Benavides does, that's actually a very, very important thing to remember coming into this fight, because whilst they're not dissimilar in age, definitely dissimilar in wear and tear, and... He is most certainly coming in significantly fresher than Joseph Benavides. So essentially what I'm saying is, in fight years, he's much younger than Benavides. Should have really said that in the beginning. Benavides comes into this fight with a record of 28 wins and 5 losses. He's a very veteran fighter of the game. He's been around for a long time and he fights uh, uh, Figueredo who has a 17-1 record. Now, whilst the numbers are not different, obviously Benavides has been with the WEC and the UFC for a long period of time. And as, as I just mentioned, Davis and Figueredo has just joined the UFC. He's had about six or seven fights, not very many. So that's something to recall and to think about. And that's a very key thing for us to remember. Joseph Benavides stands at five foot four inches tall, which makes him an inch shorter than Figueredo, uh, who stands at five foot five. Now, whilst that is true, and he also does have a little bit of a reach advantage over Joseph Benavides with a 68 inch reach, as opposed to Benavides' 65 inch reach, giving him a three inch reach advantage. You've got to remember that Benavides has spent a lot of his career at bantamweight. So he's used to fighting bigger men, and this is not a significantly bigger man. Also, what Figueredo gives uh, has an uh, advantage in, in terms of reach, I think Benavides makes up for when it comes down to the technical specifics of the fight game and like, and on the feet in terms of boxing, the way they fight. I think Benavides can make up for that. But that's still something for us to remember and recall coming into this fight, is that he is going to have these slight differences or advantages over him in terms of sizing. Now... To describe both their styles, we can group this because they fight very similarly. I would say they're both brawlers. The difference is that Benavidez has frozen a lot more kicks. I believe he's got good wrestling. He's got good grappling overall. And um, whereas Figueredo really prefers to stand on the firm feet and then exchange. But on the feet, they're both brawlers. And, and that's what makes this fight a very appealing and fun fight for the fans. And I really cannot wait for it. 
some of their key wins. So we'll start with Davis and Figueredo because his key wins is going to be much shorter than um, than Joseph Benavides. But he's beating the likes of John Moraga. John Moraga is a top contender in the UFC's 125 division, or he was at least. He's beaten Tim, Tim Elliott. And a guy who I think a lot of is Alexandra Pantoja, who um, Figueredo is beating as well. So those are good wins for Figueredo coming into this fight, and he's going to be needing to use the experience he gained from those fights coming into this fight if he wants to have a chance to really walk away with the win. Joseph Benavides has beaten guys like Miguel Torres all the way back in the days. I don't know if um, a lot of you guys have been watching MMA for that long, but Miguel Torres was the man when he beat him, just one fight removed from losing his belt and being 37-2 and two at the time, which is a ridiculous mixed martial arts record. So that's a really, really good win for Joseph Benavides and one that we should really remember and recall because Miguel Torres don't get the respect and love that he deserves. Um, Joe's Benavid has also beaten Triple C himself as I mentioned he's beaten Harry Sahudo, which is a great win he's beaten Ali Bagaldinov which is an important win to remember he's also beaten Juicy A. Formega the man who beat Davison Figueredo he's beaten him not once but twice and uh, you know that's a very key feather in the cap at 125 it's one of the biggest names at 125 one of the staples in the top 5 for the longest time since the division has existed really and that's an important win for us to remember and then back at Bantam where he had beaten the likes of um, Eddie Wineland as well and of course he beat Ian McCall in the early inception of the flyweight division so he's got some good wins to his name the issues for Benavides coming into this fight is certainly going to be his age, the wear and tear, is it catching up for him? And for Davidson Figueredo, it's going to be his predictability. The, I know what he's coming out to do. He knows what he's coming out to do. Everyone knows he's coming out there to try and knock out Benavides. It's not that simple in the fight game, though. And I'm very, very interested to see if he's going to shuffle up his game to be able to, you know, make some changes coming into this fight so we can surprise Benavides with something. If he is able to, I don't know, but we'll see. The next factor for Benavidez is going to be his well-rounded game and the experience he has at the top of the division. And for Figueredo, it's going to be his punching power. At 125, he is a lethal knockout artist. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him relying on that connecting and getting a win there. It's a very interesting fight. Let's get into the prediction. This fight will play out on the feet, in my opinion. On the feet, Benavidez has more tools than Figueredo. So I believe on the if they was having a pure boxing match, Figueredo may have been able to catch him and land and connect, knock him out, and he may have won like that, but this ain't a boxing match. It's not even a kickboxing match where Benavides, I think, would win, being, being that I believe Benavides has much better kicks than Figueredo. Also, in the clinch, I believe he's more versatile, and because he does have that wrestling up his sleeve, I believe he's much more confident to let a lot of stuff fly. As the fight wears on, we're going to be seeing a more well-rounded Benavides, in my opinion. Rounds one and two, I believe we're going to be seeing a striker Benavides. As the fight goes on, we're going to see Benavides implement a more well-rounded game. As he implements a more well-rounded game, I believe he's going to start racking up points and racking up rounds. At which point, we're going to be sat there at the end of the fifth round with Benavides being comfortably either a four-round lead or maybe even winning the first five, winning all, all the five rounds. In my opinion, the only round that Figueredo can win is the first round where he's going to be fresh and able to keep Benavides off him. But if he does manage to catch Benavides with his power, that wouldn't surprise me. I'm just not going to go with it. I have to lean on the more versatile, experienced and diverse fighter with a wide range of tools to get the win. So fight fans, for my official prediction, I'm going with Joseph Benavides to finally, finally win that world title and hopefully get the respect that he's always deserved and he can finally have this mantle above his showpiece in his house for a career well earned this is a really really big moment for Benavides I hope he comes through I am rooting for Benavides I'm going to be honest I've tried to remain objective in my uh, breakdown but I still believe that Benavides is going to get it done and I am a fan of Benavides not that I'm not a fan of Figueredo I just really like Benavides and it'll be a well earned world championship fight uh, win if he used to win this. So I'm really rooting for him. Anyways, fight fans, my personal biases aside, I'd love to know how you guys see this fight, guy. I'd love to know your predictions and what you thought about my predictions. Let me know if you like my prediction. And if you're new to this channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel, help me grow my platform, share it out with your friends and fans. And thank you for watching, guys. I'm Rohan. This is Mindful Combat.